Hi guys. Today's lesson is going to be on numeral identification. So that's just saying our numerals or our numbers in the right way. Okay. So this lesson is going to start with two digit numbers. That's a two part number. And then I'm going to move to three part numbers. Okay. So if you're a kindergartner or a first grader, okay, this could be helpful for, for both sets of friends. Okay. So we're going to read just these 10 numbers first. So you tell me what it is. 80, good. 30, 10, 50. So kindergartners, this is new for some of you. Some of you haven't really um, had these numbers very much. Okay, so these might be new. 20, good. 70. And 40, good. Okay, and then we have just these single digit numbers that we're going to read. Okay, two, good job. Five, four, Zero. Good job. Eight. Nine. One. Six. Seven. And three. Nice work. Okay. Now we're going to put those numbers together. So our ten numbers and our single digit numbers we're going to put together. So we have an 80 here and a 2. So I have dots that I'm going to line up the best I can. At school, I have these fancy arrow cards. So kids that work with me, you guys know what those arrow cards are, but I forgot to bring them home, so I had to make my own. So we have 82. So that number we say is 82. 30, good, and a 5. So 30 and 5 makes the number 30. Five. Awesome. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Shh. Ten and four. And that makes the number 14. Those are our teen numbers and those are our tricky ones sometimes. They always have a one in the front because it's a group of ten. My dog is being loud. Shh. Sorry. Here we have a 50. And zero. So that just stays as the number 50. 20 and an 8 makes the number 28. Oh, I have a zero and a 9. That just makes the number 9. There's no groups of 10 here. Nothing here. So it's just this number nine. And we're going to see what happens when we do three digits with that in a little bit. I have a 70 and a one. Makes the number 71. 71. And I have a 40 and a six. And that makes the number 46. Okay, so those were our two-digit number practice cards, and now we're going to go to three digits. So we're going to just read these numbers that are in the hundreds first, okay? And this may be new for a lot of you as well. That number is 700. There are three places. One, two, three places. So when you see three places, we're going to use the word hundred. So that one was 700. 300, good. It means there's three groups of 100. 100, 100, and 100 makes 300. 500, good. So how many groups of hundreds is that? Five, good. One, two, three, four, five. Five groups of hundreds. 100, just one group of 100. 
800, awesome. 400, 900, and 600, good. Now we're going to put those together, and this is new for a lot of friends, okay? We work on it, if you come work with me, we do our arrow cards and we've worked on these hundreds digits before. Okay, so we have how much here? 700, good, and I'm gonna put them underneath to start with and hope that I can hold them all. Okay, and I'll read just this part. 80, great, and then read just that part. Two, good. Now read it from the top to the bottom, just each part individually. So this part, then this part, then this part. 700, 80, 2. Now let's put it together. Let's see what it looks like. So what does that part say? That part now says 780. And now what if we put on our last part? 782, because this is still 700 under there. This is still 80 under there. And then our two, 782. That is a three digit number. All right, let's try the next one. 300, good. Say the next part, 30. Good, and our last part, five. Okay, so I want you to say all three parts separately, the top, the middle, and the bottom. 300, 30, five. Okay, what happens when I put them together like that? This number becomes 330. What happens when I put them all together? 335. Still 300 under there. Still 30 under there. And 35. Sometimes friends like to look at it like this. You know that that's 35. And here's the 300. And it goes together to make 335. Okay, this next one is one of my favorites. Good, 500. 10. 10. And eight. Okay, now this one is gonna be a little trickier. Say each of the parts. 500, good. 10 and eight, but we don't say this one 510 eight, do we? Let's take a look at this part first. What does this number now make? 18, so now say it, 500. Try to make sure they're covered correctly. 518. So this one's a little bit tricky because it doesn't say its name like 20 or 30. It says 10, and then 10 and 8 turns into 18. So 518. Nice work. Okay, let's take a look. 100. 50. Good. I'm going to try to put these all together as we work this time. Four. Okay, do you remember what's under there? 154, let's pull it apart. 154, all put together, 154. Okay, let's do two more. 800, 20, Say this part, 820, 800. what happened there? I didn't have any ones, zero ones. So this number stays as 820, 
820 and zero ones, 820. Okay, this is the last one and this is probably my favorite. It's a little tricky. Let's see if we can do it. 400. Hmm. Zero. No groups of 10. Okay. No groups of 10. So this is what we see so far. Four hundreds. No tens. And nine ones. What is going to happen with that? Read these numbers. This would be 400. This is nothing. And the bottom part is 9. So remember we did that with the two-digit numbers. We actually used the 9 on that one. It was 9, just 9, because there's no groups of 10. So this is just 9. So when I put this here, and we have a 0 in the middle, that makes it 400. Nine. We don't read anything here because there's nothing there. 409. Sometimes kids get this one confused and they read it as 490. But it's not 90 because if it was 90, there would have to be nine groups of 10 to make 490. And in this number, there are no groups of 10. So this is just... 409. Okay. Notice that we never use the word and when we set our numbers. We did not say 409. You can say and if you're saying this is 400 and 9, and I put them together, but it makes the number 409. So when we read a two digit or a three digit number, we want to read them without the word and, okay? And means something special later down the road when you get a little bit older in math, okay? And it talks about whole numbers and parts. So we don't want to use that word and yet. All right, I said that was the last one, but let's do one more. Okay, last one. 970. Okay, so what number is that? 970, good. And then I just have... One. So what number did I make? 971. Nice job. Okay, so if you guys want, you can make these at home. They're just paper. They're just uh, copy pieces of paper that I ripped in pieces. And I tried to do the best I could um, to make it so that the dots would line up at the end because you want your dots to line up. You can't, you can't put them like this. Okay, you have to have the dots lining up. Um, but there's a really cool game you can play. Um, I play it at, at school. I'll just I'll show you how I have them right now. I have them all flipped upside down. Okay, and each person takes one from each pile, and you can do it with just two digits, or you can do the three digits. Okay, and then each person is going to make their number. So I made the number six hundred forty-three. And my partner would go, my partner would take one from each pile, and my partner would make their number, and my partner made the number 977. So now I have to compare those two numbers, 643 with 977. And whoever has the greater number, or you could play whoever has the less number, it doesn't matter, but you have to decide before you play the game. If I'm playing whoever has the greater number wins, then this partner would win and they would get all the pieces. Okay, so that's a fun game to play and it's a super easy one to make because like I said, I just use pieces of paper and, and cut them up. Okay, um, so that's a really fun game to play. But in order to be able to keep the cards, you have to be able to say the number correctly. And if you can't, you got to put your numbers back and start again. Okay, have fun making your numbers, guys. Bye.